welcome to the primaryodors.org YouTube channel. I did an experiment. The idea behind the experiment, in our noses, there's about 400 or so different proteins, different kinds of protein, that detect smells. In theory, just like there are three primary colors and five primary tastes, uh, there should be several primary odors. Each one of those proteins gives you a certain aroma note. Most real world smells are not going to talk to just one of those 400 or so proteins. So most of the time we can't just single one out and say, just give me that one and tell me what that smells like. There's a very few that we can do that with, but most of them we cannot. The idea behind the experiment is you have all these different aromas that have something in common. They all talk to one particular protein, one target. And by mixing them together, we can add up the effect on that target and sort of dilute the effect on the others. And then in the end, what we have is not exactly one primary odor that, that we're smelling, but something dominated by just that one. And to do this, we want to mix everything uh, so that they all smell equally as strong. And that's gonna depend on the individual um, my, my proportions are probably not going to be the same as your proportions and vice versa. It's as if we had no way to make red light, but we have lights that, that glow pink, orange, purple, yellow, and we decided, you know what, I'm going to shine all these lights together and combine them and see what that gives me, and that's going to be close to a primary color. That's what I'm doing, but with scent. Now, these proteins all have funny names. Uh, most of them are OR followed by a number, letter, number. It's not scary. I have about 20 or 30 of these mixtures that I've made, um, but I'm just going to present five of them, describe what they smell like to me, and take a, take a guess at uh, what these five proteins uh, actually code for in the nose. Pretty cool, right? So the first one I have is the mixture of compounds for OR1A1. Ooh, it's a little citrusy, it's a little musty. It's very honey-like. There's this honey-like sweetness to it. It's almost herbal. So I think the core of this scent, I guess, would be the sort of honey-like, almost citrus-like, almost herbal sort of sweetness. Now, importantly, do all of the ingredients in this mixture share that note? Because if any of them doesn't, then that's probably not the R1A1 note. I think in this case they do. They all have this. Since there isn't already a word for that, I made one up. I call it Meli Citric, after Meli meaning honey and citrus. The next one I have is the mixture for OR1A2. Ooh, nice. It's, it's clean and it's, but not, not quite like cleaning products. And it's fresh, but not quite powdery. It's like something expensive. It's like some fancy perfume or high-end hotel. You know, I've smelled something a lot like this actually in Montreal. I think every city has its own smell and uh, Montreal smells or 182 ha! It just smells like something expensive. It just smells ritzy and, and sort of posh. I'm gonna call it posh for lack of a better word. I'm certainly open to suggestions. Uh, if you think this is a better one you could use, definitely let me know in the comments. The next one I have is the mixture for OR1G1. Well, that's waxy. There's no mistaking that, it's waxy. There's a few other smells I get in this, but the overwhelming consensus is waxy. And if you look at the ingredients that are in this, all of them do have that waxy note. So, 1G1, waxy, easy. Next one I have is for OR2B11. It's kind of autumnal. It's like an autumn spice, gingery, cinnamony, coffee-like like a cafe somewhere. 
I recognize this as it's part of the aroma of orange, and there is a compound in here that smells like orange. Uh, it's part of the aroma of coffee. Really interesting thing, based on the fact that orange and coffee prominently share this 2B11 note, that predicts that orange and coffee would go good together, would taste good together, smell good together. Can that possibly be right? Well, I looked into it, and it is a thing right here in my city. How cool is that? So the experiment made a prediction, or the data that went into the experiment made a prediction that turned out to be true. So without really a name for this orangey brown sort of uh, sort of note, I made one up. I called it Zingerangic from Zingiber, meaning ginger, and Naranj, meaning orange. And the last one I have for you for this video is the mixture for OR5P3. Ugh. So this one's very unpleasant, actually. And I am getting that zingerangic note, and there are some of the same compounds in this as are in the 2B11. But this is like being behind a, a bus or a semi. It's so diesel fumes. It's a bit acrid. What I get most strongly in this one is a sort of darkness, a sort of blackness. You can smell it in patchouli, in celery, nasty stuff. Cilantro if you have the gene, and you can smell it a little bit in anise, and in myrcene if you ever smell myrcene. It's delightfully icky. In my mothball video, where I smelled mothball um, materials and reported on the smells, I introduced the word mirulinesic to describe that. And that's definitely what I'm getting from the OR5P3 mixture is it seems to be very, very mirulinesic. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you for watching.